Hello, welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to our end of the year webinar for our DCS Global. And I want to thank you for joining us and happy holidays. So right now I want to introduce Randy Marcotte and he will kick us off with our webinar today. Uh, thanks, Mehdi. And uh, Mehdi will be monitoring chat. Um, we did change the agenda a little bit. I'll get to that in just a moment, but it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of logistics around the agenda and the outcomes for today. And, and if you're watching this recording, uh, we'll send you, the, uh, take a look in the link. There's how to contact us, and you can certainly go to our websites and um, take a look at that. The, the outcome of this webinar really is to thank those of you that are our existing customers for the ongoing business and partnership to talk about some of the major trends that we saw in 2022 and then look forward to 2023 and how in our space of digital signage, kiosk, wayfinding, and AV, the video conferencing collaboration, uh, how the 2022 events uh, inform the decisions for 2023. Uh, so then I'll, uh, yeah, let me just go through those real quickly. I'll introduce the other presenters in just a minute. And then, uh, if you have any questions, hit those up in chat. Medi will feed those in either through the conversation um, or at the end. Uh, the topic for today is really the finding your way. And you'll see that theme being uh, presented uh, throughout that. It's a, it's a look ahead. And as I've mentioned in these core spaces of our business, um, but it's also kind of a, an informed uh, set of decisions based on, you know, what we know has happened in, in our business and yours as customers. Uh, as far as presenters goes, uh, I'll tell you a little bit of myself and then Gary, a 60 second warning for me to hand it to you. And then uh, uh, when you're done, Gary, just hand it off to Jeff. But uh, I'm one of the uh, uh, executive team members uh, master's in public administration, and why do you care? Uh, ultimately, my uh, my approach to business has been a systems perspective. You know, what works, what scales, and uh, as one of the uh, founders of the Perfect Video Conferencing brand, and as we merged in with DCS, what we found is that if our customers don't see uh, a total cost of ownership value proposition or even a return on their investment, if they don't see that focus, it gets commoditized. And so if there's not a value in the partner that you're choosing or value in the solution that really helps your bottom line or your business enablement, why do it and don't do it? And you'll hear that throughout kind of the content that I bring to the table or the DCS and PBC approaches. If we're not a value added reseller, you shouldn't be doing business with us, but we endeavor to be more than a reseller. We endeavor to be a value added partner. Uh, and uh, you'll hear more about that uh, throughout the presentation. So Gary, I'm going to pin your video and then you're up next for a quick introduction, sir. All right. Uh, well, I'm Gary Brokling. I'm CTO with uh, DCS. And uh, my main task is to, well, a number of things, but uh, to make sure that the technology that we use is the best it can be, to build a better mousetrap, uh, to find where the disruptions are going to happen and get ahead of the game, and to uh, basically make sure that what we sell is great for the customer. So my background is in just about everything to do with technology. So I've uh, I've worked for cities, I've worked for companies, I've worked for all kinds of agencies, working on IoT projects, AV projects, um, anything you can think of, devices, design, software. So I have a very good understanding of uh, all the different elements involved to make a successful product. And that's what we do here at DCS. We uh, figure out what the customer needs and what the trends are and make sure we hit it spot on. I don't know if you want me to go any longer than that, Randy, or if that's brief enough for you. Let's hand it over to Jeff. Here we go. Jeff, I'm gonna, you're going to be spotlighted. And who are you and what makes you tick, Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Randy. And hi, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, my name is Jeff Goldstein. I am the Vice President of Sales at DCS Global. I have a 20-year background in kiosks and digital signage hardware. So... You know, when you come to me, I'm going to be able to get you the right product at the right price for the project that you're doing. And importantly as well, we have a good pipeline of products out there so we can bring them to market quickly and not have to deal with delays and things of that nature that is plaguing the world. Um, and we also work with the best in breed if we're not manufacturing ourselves. Uh, some of you on here are our software partners that we work closely with. 
um, to make sure that the best product is getting out there. And I am your advocate here at DCS for a full rollout from before we go to market to after we deploy. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back to you, Randy. Thank you, sir. Uh, we do want to make our webinars and our recorded content about outcomes that are relevant to you uh, and not so much as a sales pitch. And so really today's end of the year webinar, um, the agenda is who are the winners? Uh, what's the 2023 planning look like in in the core skills? I just, uh, Mehdi asked me to review what we uh, propagated. Oop, I'll go back down, the mouse clicking crazy. Uh, what were our, our major outcomes? Um, and again, uh, we want to help you find your way. What are the emerging trends? Uh, what's the hybrid uh, workspace look like? And that's going to be the kind of the primary uh, component here. Next up is the kind of the kits that scale and the components that you could use in order to, to achieve said benefits in 2023. We had propagated uh, the idea of doing a peer-to-peer -peer breakout room. Um, we've turned that down. So those of you in the live meeting and there were quite a few registrants, we we were asked by some folks who had been on peer-to-peer -peer things that they ended up by getting matched up with people who uh, didn't quite get it or maybe it was a little creepy. So uh, you're all in chat only, listen only mode uh, by design and by request by some of the um, customer participants that kind of want to stay anonymous behind the, behind the, uh, behind the veil. Uh, but do go ahead and chat your messaging in. Uh, and then towards the end, when we go to Q&A, for those of you that may want to stay, if, there, if for some peer-to-peer -peer discussions, we'll do that. But we have uh, we have removed that component. Uh, don't drop if you came just for that, because we'll still add it on the end. Right. Now, as far as um, content goes, I'm going to move on, uh, Jeff and and Gary, just a little bit of a context, and then I'll and then I'll hand it to you uh, to you guys next. So, right. First things first. Uh, Mehdi, I'm going to spotlight my video. Oh, and let's go live. Oh, sorry about that. Mouse click problems. Seeing underneath the hood. Yeah. Perfect. That's me. Right slide stack. Real brief. Um, winners in 2022. Uh, automation and touch list. Uh, COVID be darned. It, um, we know that it's not just about that event. It's about how we now want to go into these rooms and we're all uh, smartphone and near field technology enabled. If we can touch a cash register to get our money out of our pockets, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to come into a conference room with a calendar on one of these devices and and touch a uh, an e-reader of some sort and just have the room follow me rather than me uh, being confused by the room. So the the cabling, the wire management uh, needs to be IT free, uh, meaning you all can set this up and then not think that your end users are going to screw it up. Um, which brings me to my second point that we typically are talking about is what won in 2022. It's the idiot proofing of rooms. Uh, now, uh, anecdotally, we know that our customers uh, will ask for idiot proofing, but then mostly we, uh, we're we all pretty good at inventing a better idiot. Um, but there are some things that have happened in 2022 that should really make the technology fear free, meaning I can go into the room and and if I can figure out how to answer a phone call, I can figure out how to use AV. So the divide between our lowest common denominator, our high most high maintenance user like me, uh, the the barrier between that technology and the end user has has been removed because of a couple of things. These kits are easier to use; they're intuitive by nature, and we all went home and had to figure it out in our home offices. But now that we're headed back to the office, um, the rooms are now democratized uh, based on platform. Meaning, it's not just bring your own device, uh, and we'll chat a little bit about that as as the webinar continues. But it's also bring your own platform. Uh, I may be a Zoom shop or a Hangout shop, and I get invited to a WebEx or a Blue Jeans meeting. The gear can do what I need it to do. I don't have to force my way into the hardware. Um, so as these rooms become much more important, what we've seen as a trend is actually customers who aren't generally managed by us um, asking for additional remote management or remote control 
So a hybrid workforce includes IT being hybrid. And if there's a really important meeting um, in one of the executive conference rooms, why not give IT or an, an executive assistant or any staff who needs it the ability to remotely control that room without having to be in the room? Uh, and again, not just COVID or colds uh, as a form factor, but just convenience and, and flexibility. Both have become important uh, to our customers in, in 2023. The um, the ongoing maintenance uh, of that uh, leads to reliability. Uh, obviously, reliability is prediction and reputation, both ours and yours. Uh, and so what we have found, uh, the manufacturers, especially in the Logitech lane and the Poly lane, they're selling not only directly, but through us or a distributor maintenance plans that are part of the bundle or uh, you know products like the Neat Bar comes with a a, a bulk warranty built into the platform because uh, we know that as more rooms get deployed, the load on facilities or IT could go higher. And, and obviously a lot of our customers ask them for the easy button or ask for help. And that's where, where this comes in. Um, because we've been on these meetings um, and we have a distributed workforce, uh, we know that the voice of the person speaking needs to be either amplified in the room or amplified over the web. And that becomes a interactive need and so we've we've seen a, a lot more live streaming. So Zoom on this platform is is doing this all of the webinar that you're on or the recording that you're on. But we can also hairpin out of the Zoom platform and send this to a digital signage platform or send it out to other devices that are connected to the internet. And that's really where we've seen the live streaming demands create a networking infrastructure concern as well as a um easeability for the end users to see the content. It's uh, uh, almost like content on demand when you're running a uh, an all-hands meeting. Lastly, as a winner for 2023, it's, it's uh, surprising to me, but the video wall infrastructure, more and more of our customers are enabling those as multi-use platforms. Marketing love them and reception love them, uh, but now video walls are also command centers in IT rooms or wall boards for customer satisfaction. And so the price to performance in the in the multi-use will justify uh, some of these video walls. It's not something we've specialized in or has been a big part of our business. It's been a, a demand driven by customer need uh, and trends in the market. So with that, um, uh, Mehdi, I don't know if there's anything in chat. I'll do a little Santa water uh, lubrication and see if there's anything we need to feed in. And then I'll move to my last slide. Anything, Mehdi? Uh, one question you brought up, uh, what are the potential limitations or challenges of using this technology? There's like a security concern about that. Uh, potential limitations or challenge. I'm going to go back to that. So uh, mm -hmm. generally speaking, as a on the video conferencing side, um, the, the majority of the security concerns are going to be managed by the cloud provider. So we used to build bridges and have them in our data center. Now all of this is a purchase from a Microsoft Teams or Hangouts or Pexip or name your Zoom provider. So most of the security is, is managed by those. From a practical perspective, when we're training our clients on the hardware, uh, there's land-based or premise-based security that is kind of standard computer OS, you know, the, the devices. Many of these platforms are now managed on Android devices and not Windows. So you have less OS uh, related concerns about the hardware in the room. So that's a huge improvement. Um, but really the best practices for managing any device on your prem or any room in your prem is is step one. Step two is the is the reliability on that um, comes from the cloud provider. Zoom has their own security protocols. We on our install and our training wrap all of that in a nice Christmas bow for you because there are best practices around passwords and and the way people use the room that that manage. So from an AV perspective, it's 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 a it's a multifaceted stool, and all of those legs have to be in place, or otherwise the thing tips over. From a kiosk and a digital signage perspective, Jeff, I queue you up if you wanted to add anything to this during during your turn. But from a security perspective, of those same thing is true. These are cloud driven solutions, and the hardware is hardened. So there's there's physical layer security, and then there's logical layer security that just goes along with just general IT best practices. So, 
Gary or Jeff, I don't know if you had anything on the security side you'd like to add, but I'm going to move on to the 2023 stuff. And certainly, Matty, if you see anything else in the chat, uh, pop it in. I was just going to say, and something you, you alluded to earlier, is that the Android device is becoming more and more popular, and they're significantly more locked down than Windows devices and easier to control and simpler. So, yeah, it makes a big difference, and that's the trend right now. All right, well, so with the... Um... Uh, with the looking glass ahead of me and my crystal ball nice and polished, um, it, the content you're seeing here around predictions, do a Google search on what you see in the AV world. This is not uniquely us, but this is informed by our customer base and the and the trends that we're seeing. Um, some of the manufacturers, because they make something that does one of these, will emphasize one over the other. But these really are the things that we're seeing based on our customer that um, is surprising, exciting, and motivating. A wireless, a wireless HDMI, wireless sound, wireless projection. So these devices that usually required expensive and complicated and and uh, managed cables that were a pain in the tail, are there's now really decent, really good, predictable wireless technology. Finally, right? We haven't seen all of the manufacturers shift to wireless, and there's always going to be a combo. We're loving this because it's going to give us the opportunity and really challenging physical locations with barriers to cabling or materials in the wall, we're going to be able to bypass that, speed up your deployment, and still give you reliability. So the, the wireless uh, infrastructure is, is pretty exciting for us. Uh, major leaps in the uh, laser projectors are out there. So the, the brightness of those and the built-in features with a cost going down, uh, you know, supply chain be damned, we're seeing these projectors come to the table that act as hubs for a conference room. So really much better audio out to other peripherals, uh, much better wireless content sharing built into these projectors. And so we, when we're designing rooms, we're always wondering, well, how the heck do we get to the projector? Because we, we have this big, beautiful wall. Now there's a much more compelling reason to to upgrade your projector experience. Because if it can be the, the hub to the spokes, uh, you'll get more features built in. And again, at an ever decreasing uh, price point to performance. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see what's happening in the laser projector space for a nerd like me. Uh, maybe not maybe not for you. Uh, the hybrid workspace, uh, Gary's gonna spend a lot more time on this. It brings back up the, um, the BYOD events, the bring your own device, the bring your own platform. Um, we know that there's a flex use and a flex assignment. So as I mentioned, I might go into a Zoom room and need to run a Teams um, room. I could I could re-image the room or I could have it toggle uh, or switch. And that's the, um, that's the thing that we're seeing. Or today it might be an executive conference room and then tomorrow it might be a huddle room. So it's not just the platform in the room, it's the people and the workspaces that we're designing have a lot more flexibility uh, by design. Um, I'm using um, augmented uh, reality, not virtual reality. So, uh, and there is a, a unique difference between those. We're seeing uh, some trends in the camera manufacturers and the platforms to use these 4K cameras that are collecting a lot of data to then enhance your experience. We all went home during COVID and liked our Hollywood squares or our Brady Bunch. Um, and when we go back to the office, it gets a little weird for the far end uh, participants, especially for meeting equity, that if there's a conference table crowded by four or five people, uh, the far end people don't get to see Gary or Randy in the same proportions. And so the, the augmented experience in the room then becomes stitching people or changing for auto capturing whiteboard and bringing it in there, letting the technology do some of the work for the far end people being able to um, participate better and vice versa when I'm coming in as a far end participant and and Medi's actually demonstrated that with this uh, Zoom meeting, she pushed a virtual background out to us without us needing to do anything. Uh, and that you know that that ability for the platform to help for consistency um, is an is a trend that our customers are really excited about. It's less IT work, less overhead. And, and uh, lastly, I'll merge these two AI and platform interoperability. Um, the cameras are collecting information. And then what we do with that um, becomes uh, subjective. In our customer base, they like to know if someone has started multitasking at their desktop or if their their slides are here, but then the, the video call is there and they're changing their camera angles. And the, 
um, the platforms are then able to give that uh, collected information of how many people in the room did people if you had 10 people in a meeting uh, did eight of them step out it's sort of the uh, compliance uh, training um, component of that and and these rooms can uh, have uh, you modify what you expect the room to do and and how you want people to work so it can stitch or sh or frame the room at your command not the end user struggling with a remote control um, and then lastly, what we're going to see is less less worry about my bridge or yours. Zoom being able to call Teams, Teams being able to call WebEx and sort of interoperability. And so pretty soon we're in a space where um, I don't ever ask you which carrier you're on for your cell phone and you don't ask me, we just call each other. And we're entering a space where all of these platforms realize that interoperability leads to stickiness. So if I'm a Teams shop and I can call anything else, why would I ever leave Teams? And so all of the platform providers are struggling with this um, universal bridge uh, component. So uh, that's it for my uh, looking glass into 2020, my crystal ball. What uh, what we do now is we pivot to the team members um, to see if um, if I nailed it or if I got it wrong and, and what they have to add. As, as I do so, it's important for you to kind of see our digital real estate. I wanted to give context to some of the products and our philosophy. So please take a look at the DCS Global website. Uh, you can then pivot there to the uh, the merger partner, uh, Perfect Video Conferencing. You'll see an, a whole host of products and services that are being referenced there. But we we put it a, a little bow around it in our on our web store, where you can see not only the product but the direction we're going. So if you come back and look at the featured products on a regular basis, you'll see the trends. And the and then I mentioned those kits that we see. We we know that this stuff has to be modular, um, and scalable. And then you'll see some small, medium, and large um, components and platform based components for you there. Mehdi, I think uh, I wanted to see if there were any other questions that came up before I move on. Uh, right now, not yet. Good. And I think if I got this right, we've got. Gary, yes, sir. All right, Gary, 60 second warning while I pull up your content. Well, I was introduced earlier, so this is Gary Brooklyn and uh, CTO for DCS. But um, 2022 has been a, a very exciting year, a lot of new technology, a lot of changes. So um, I'm going to talk just about a few things. It's interesting, Randy mentioned AI a number of times. So our company does for larger clients some amazing and incredible AI stuff. So that allows us to develop and really understand the technology trends uh, for you guys. And one of the AI trends that I've been really excited about is the wayfinding trend where you bring up basically um, something that's taken off a QR code. It shows you where you're walking and it shows you your directions as you're walking in the space you're in. So that's one of those cool little AI things that uh, that is more common but we've uh, done a lot of work in AI, a lot of interesting things going on. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a company we're working with called Maptician. And uh, one of the things is that they, um, they've they really taken hold during the COVID uh, experience because they are um, basically allotting all the spaces that are not constantly um, occupied. So hoteling, that's called, but they're uh, in there and they're showing um, the room assignments, the meeting room assignments, all of that kind of stuff on a map. That's available through your cell phone, through a web interface, in the office. Um, there's signage on all the spaces. Uh, there's an employee directory and uh, collaboration can be uh, set up through these tools. Uh, seat occupancy data allows for management of where your employees and where your space are being used and uh, hot seats uh, for on-demand use, same-day use. All of this kind of stuff is, is uh, what Matician is all about. It uh, integrates into any of your calendaring systems, Outlook, whatever you have, and allows you to um, basically do all the things you did before through other means. Now you can do them where there's a merge of people who are in the office, people who are remote, and get that all to fit together. So they've done an incredible job of that. Uh, next slide, please. or I could just talk. <laughs> so um, the ability to cre create very complex seating strategies is is huge. And that's something that's very common now. Uh, shared spaces, uh, um, 
meeting rooms that are, are utilized in very odd and, and different ways to what was happening when everybody was in the office, uh, mixed use, that kind of thing. Uh, unprecedented visibility into what your peers are doing. So that really is good for um, picking a day to come to the office when there's a set of people there that, that you want to coordinate with on something. It's it's a beautiful way to set it up. And now with the mixed use uh, experience, it's uh, essential. Um, the mapping engine allows the maps to serve as visualization tools. So you get an idea of what's going on in the office. You can change the maps context, uh, see changing schedules, assignments, and configure uh, for past and future use. The analytics part of it is also amazing because you've got all of these things going into create a database that allows you to see uh, how your offices are being used um, and basically future planning, capacity needs, all of those things are built into the system. So um, those are the basics of the Baptician product. The thing that DCS is working on specifically with some of the clients is electronic paper devices. So that's something that um, I think everybody has seen through some of the, the readers that are out there. They're paper devices, they call them e-ink devices. This is a, an expansion on that. It's a super common technology in Europe, Asia, South America, and it's a beautiful technology from the perspective of adding it to uh, a build. So let's say you, you're getting into Maptician, but you want to um, put a, a board or a sign on each room. So let people know what's going on in that particular meeting room. The e-ink devices are basically um, devices that have a year to two year battery. They can be posted on anywhere in the glass, no wiring, uh, no major design layouts are required. That device goes onto that meeting room and then you have any kind of information you want about that meeting room, who's gonna be in the meetings, when the next meeting is, all of that can be shown at that uh, entry. And those e-ink devices um, are very cost effective and can be basically placed in any of the meeting rooms. There are uh, workspace tags that are also e-ink. So again, one to two years of battery life, they simply get posted at the workstation and they'll tell you who's in that space, uh, what the scheduling is, if it's available, if it's uh, uh, on-demand kind of space, any of this information is available through these tags which go into the work workspaces. So there's a lot of options here, but these devices are very easy to implement. They just could be posted uh, they have their own networking systems, so basically they don't have to tag on the customer's um, systems. All they need is a, a um, an access point. The access point works on different frequencies, doesn't interfere with what's in the office, and you have this entire system rolled out, labeling and uh, working in all these spaces. Um, one of the other things I just wanted to quickly mention outside of this is one of the biggest trends that I've seen is the trend toward Android devices. So uh, this is for... Um, digital media players and um, for a kiosk, for all kinds of different things. These devices are fantastic from the perspective of they are very secure, very basic. They're driven towards a specific task. And the Android devices, we've seen lots of progress in them. We're developing a lot of new technology, which goes into the Android devices that makes them more manageable. So almost all the, the negatives that have been in place for Android devices in a commercial space are disappearing. And we're using a lot of Android devices. They're working out incredibly well for the customers, much simpler to, to utilize and much cheaper to, to buy. Um, Harry, we did have a question that came in in chat, if you're open to Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, what's the value proposition of Maptician? Uh, what does it cost? Which I don't think we'll get to on, on this recording. Um, but does it help reduce any of my costs? I don't know, I don't know if you want to speak to that or if you wanted me to. Well, I can certainly start on that. I know you uh, have done a cost analysis for several customers on this, but uh, the the reduction cost is is significant because it allows you to manage remote workers. It allows you to um, schedule and organize. It allows you to team people who need to work together on a project, I mean, there's a number of ways in which implementing a system like this is going to save you quite a bit of money when it comes to staffing issues, organizing workspaces. And um, 
well, basically, I'll, I'll let you continue with, with some of the things, but it's not a highly uh, cost prohibitive um, product. It's actually very, very cheap to, to put it in place and utilize in terms of how, what it does for you as opposed to other solutions that have been commonplace in the past. Yeah, the, the, the common return on investment has been twofold. The, um, the platform itself, and as Gary mentioned, the, the staffing, mapping, those are the productivity questions. Um, and I think you did a nice job covering all of the productivity uh, productivity items there, Gary. The other part of that value proposition historically with any of these wayfinding or digital signage or, or planning is the actual commercial real estate. So we've had a number of customers where we've worked with them and they've been able to fund an entire AV build out by the reduction of their commercial real estate footprint, which they were already considering based on kind of the post-COVID error. Um, so they better use a smaller space. They save a lot of money on the real estate side. That money then gets reinvested into, uh, em, you know, emerging IT projects, and, and that's really been the the key takeaway. Is our customers like the efficiencies that Gary talked about and the collaboration? Time is money, but then they also like the savings on their their cost to doing business in a building. Thanks, Randy. You nailed it. That was <laughs> that was the one thing I missed. So perfect. <laughs> Um, makes, I'm pretty much makes the dream, the dream work. Yeah, I just that, I just hit the last one, so that was actually your last slide. So we should uh, give Jeff his twenty minute or twenty second warning. Sounds good. All right, Thanks, everyone. I'm gonna pin you, um, and then pivot. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. Um, we're going to talk briefly about some new things that, that have happened in 2022 20, uh, at DCS. Um, what's not mentioned in here is this, the, our, our core business in the kiosk and digital signage. We had an excellent 2022. Um, we started rolling out a, well, we didn't roll out, we rolled out a 450 plus uh, key, uh, digital signage deployment for the state of Texas. Um, along with lots of indoor and outdoor kiosks. And, and outdoor kiosks is definitely a trend that we saw pick up in 2022. Um, but other than that, I'm going to get into real quick where, where we've seen um, some traction and where we'll show it in, in we are manufacturing here in the United States. We are getting into some custom enclosures for different LCDs and touchscreens. Um, people are very familiar with digital signage, menu boards that are out there, but a lot of them are, are installed, um, quite frankly, it's ugly. You have cables and wires and media players hanging out. It obviously provides a security threat, but um, the main reason is aesthetics. It does not look good. And so we're going to take this the, you know, digital signage to the next level. And as you can see, we've created a, a flush wall mount kind of picture frame um enclosure meant for an lcd of various sizes um and it can be touch screen or non-touch and inside this enclosure is where, where we hide the cables and the media players or computers um, and all the wires so it looks very clean when it's installed and what you see here is from our manufacturing facility the raw metal so we can powder coat it any color our customers would like um, we can brand it with logos. You see a lot of these are starting to go up in hotels, sporting arenas, um, government facilities, college campuses, anywhere where you, where you want your digital signage to, to fit in and, and flow with the aesthetics of, of, the, um, of the facility. Um, I, I can see a trend actually in, in the next few years of these starting to go in people's homes. Uh, and if you want to go to the next slide, please, Randy. We've also... Uh, done some tablet enclosures. So these would be things that would go in complementary with Maptician or other types of uh, places where you'd want a more high-end tablet to go on a wall for maybe a conference room or to play some video. Um, but this is gonna secure any, any tablet out there. This particular one is a Surface Go. And it's obviously for protection and security. But in addition to that, we, we are a manufacturer, so we could put different peripherals. And currently these are being used uh, for twofold. One is to check people into a facility. And so it has a biometric reader on it. So it would authenticate who is checking into that facility and they answer a few, some questions on the Surface Go. 
The other is for HR. So we've added a keyboard tray and, and a keyboard to these. So it's, it's easy for people to get into their HR applications in break rooms or, or wherever employees want to put these up. But these are also trends where I, I feel in the upcoming years, it's not just going to be in the public space, but you're going to start probably seeing these go into people's homes. Um, and again, we are manufacturing these here in the United States. So our lead time is very short and we can turn around any sort of custom build relatively easy. Um, on to the next slide, sir. And a, an overriding theme of this talk has been AI and digital signage and kiosks kind of have their own AI. It's been around for a little bit, but it's now it's really starting to take off and it's where the, the digital signage or kiosks have a camera on them and they are zeroing in on the on the persons or people looking, either looking at the screen or walking by and they're figuring out their demographics and they are tailoring the message on the digital signage to that demographic base to obviously spark more interest and you know better for their advertisers. Um, and it's also going to put up barcode readers, as we've talked about, so people can take that information from the kiosk and digital sign, go on their phone, and now they have it whenever they want to reference it. So just, just as Gary was speaking and Randy was speaking to AI, it, it is coming into all aspects and it's only going to get get greater, obviously, and it is creepy, as we all know, it's kind of big brotherish, but it is coming and it's been here and it's going to just continue to go. So we might as well get on board and uh, uh, DCS, we are on board. And so if you have any needs or we have the software platform to take care of that. Um, and then the next slide is uh, an exciting new aspect of our company. We've moved our main warehouse facility from Texas to Woodville, Woodville, Washington, which is just outside of Seattle. We have uh, our main operations team guys based out of there. So they've taken over that and everything, as you can see these pictures on here, we just moved in December 1st. So we're unpacking and getting everything set up next year. I'll have a much cooler slide and the walls won't be bare and there'll be a lot of stuff going on, but we've just moved in and it's going to allow us to um, get the kiosks and digital signage quicker to market because we are, are going to be near the port of Seattle. So for our overseas facilities to get the, the um, pieces and parts we need to do our assembly at this facility, they'll be able to come over uh, inexpensively and quickly out to the market. So that's a very big plus for us. Um, we're going to have some dedicated R&D space, some more and exciting new products coming out. And obviously we're gonna do all of our quality control and repairs from this facility. So everything's, most everything's gonna be shipping out. We, we still have our facility in Chicago where we do some um, metal fab and that's where that comes out on. But I wanted to point out our, our new facility in Woodenville, Washington, which I am excited to go visit in 2023 myself. So that should be nice. And. That really covers what, what's gone on new in 2023. Obviously, some new products that we've touched on and some new emerging trends in, in the kiosk and digital signage. But since I've been doing this for, for quite a while, the you, you do see more and more, obviously, the, the menu ordering kiosks, the digital, you go in any McDonald's or fast food restaurant now, they pretty much all have kiosks. And that, that trend's only going to continue. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back to Randy to wrap up uh, our webinars for 2022. Thank you very much for your time. Clearly, one has to unmute to do wrap up. So yeah, the outcomes as we uh, promised today, kind of the emerging trends, hybrid workspace, uh, kits that collaborate, uh, kits for collaboration that scale. Um, and we did get a couple of things through chat. Uh, Mehdi, anything else in chat that we need to call attention to before we hit the end on the record? Gotcha. I think we hit out of the park, but one question arise with the AI of talk. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a potential ethical considerations or unintended consequences by using those technologies, or are we just going to write on? All of the above, yes. <laughs> uh, um, just listen to any news article or NPR. Like, who's writing the AI tech? Yeah, we're we're a passenger on some of that, but we can also help you navigate within your 
own organization, the assumptions of AI. We're not going all in with all functions of AI software because we know some, as Jeff points out, is is creepy. And some of it's based on algorithm written by people who might not have the same cultural sensitivities or or community awareness that you do. So the AI that we like is really about the, the function of the technology in the room. I go to my uh, nephew's school and I check in and I'm a donor at that school. The database knows that I am. So it says, welcome Randy on the screen instead of welcome white Randy. So we're, we're aware that AI has been used for bad um, profiling stuff. That's not this. Um, and I think that's points to those oh. eth ethical concerns. Also, a lot of the AI we're using is around uh, augmented reality, so it's temporary use to to achieve a goal. So it's not stored data. So, in many cases, the AI we, we're using is not what you're seeing in the news. It's just basically a tool to achieve another goal that is a temporary thing and not stored. Anyways, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, augmented reality is a big thing we're working on as well, and that's where a lot of our AI is uh, sure. is entrenched. And you can see this in action in a, in a Zoom or a Teams room where they're using Aver or Logi or Neat technology, a number of other people do it. It's, it's really about heads and shoulders and eyes, and then give that count to HR to say that a 10-person room was used by 20 people. And is that a, a germ trend or a COVID transmission event? And so it's that type of who was in the room and who had... Um, a cold and who transmitted it potentially. So it's that type of stuff that is just good for the business to know. And then, and candidly, the functions that we like, it's, I, uh, where's the remote? How do I move the camera? We'll just have the camera move itself based on head counts in the room um, or have the camera look at the, the washout of the open window and do its own white balancing, have the AI technology decide on color tone and saturation and, and the iris of the lens of the camera rather than everyone forgetting that the camera needs to be moved and then the far end participants one looking at bowling pins at the end of a table. It's it, That's the practical use of, of AI. Jeff, I don't know if you had any anecdotes uh, in from the, the wayfinding space that, that would add color to that, but uh, I open it to you if you do. No, no, that's fine. I think you covered it really well. Good. Good. Uh, Maddie, anything else in, in chat? Uh, I just would end that one on you're the driver of where this does or doesn't get used. And and it, full disclosure in a product, it, we're not leading with AI. It just happens to be a trend in 2023. And so we're not ignoring AI uh, in, in, in this space because it is happening. Going once, Maddie, going twice, anything else? Perfect, perfect. Oh, I think we hit every question we have here. Good. So then out of this comes a um, kind of a follow-up uh, survey from Medi and, and obviously happy holidays, Happy New Year, be safe, be well. Uh, we do continue the webinar series about once a month. Uh, and then we, our intention is to do these in such a way that informs your uh, decision-making. We'd like those decisions to be with us, uh, buy and have us support products. But ultimately, the, um, if you have content for a webinar or feedback on these that help us inform you to make great technology decisions, that is our primary goal is to help guide um, and lead the way uh, but not be a barrier for you. So Gary, that's all I have to say for this. I don't know if you or Jeff have anything else as a goodbye and thank you, but uh, I'm tapping it. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays, everybody. Look forward to working with everyone in 2023.